Operation compliance has to be one of the most troubling things that I've ever heard of in the city. The police officers, they got to ride with this compliance. They need to be out stopping them people, just knocking people in the head. Right. You know, I'm running a legit business. Entrepreneurs have said, well, look, let them catch me if they can. Right now, the city has decided we're going to try to catch you and we're going to put together a special unit to do so. We all know Detroit's in trouble. A bankrupt city full of crumbling houses, abandoned factory buildings, and a fast dwindling population. Yet, in the midst of all this collapse and decay, former Detroit Mayor David Bing announced a new regulatory crackdown on code violating businesses. A crackdown he expected to shut down 20 new small businesses a week. It's Operation Compliance. What I think about Operation Compliance is I think that they could be doing something better. Should be cleaning up some of these vacant lots out here and cutting some of the grass throughout the city and boarding up some of these houses or clean up the streets. You're taking our tax dollars, clean it up. These two business owners have managed to keep their businesses open on Livernoy Avenue, though many other businesses along the road have been targeted and shut down by Operation Compliance in the preceding months. You know, when we call for, for their services, as far as someone breaks in, they never show up, but yet and still they want to come and you know, blackball you and close your business because you might be a little late paying fees or something like that. Unnecessary harassment from the, you know, the, the city. Complain about our signs out in front of the buildings and all this and that. But they ain't bothering the people downtown with the money, but they mess with the black communities and the poor people. It is hard to run a business in Detroit. It's taken me three years to get approval for an outside patio. Larry Mongo runs Cafe de Mongo a remarkably successful restaurant and bar in downtown Detroit. You truly trying to serve the public interest. You would simplify things, but simplifying things in Detroit means loss of jobs. So politicians rather try to tax me to death, charge me to death, to keep their votes and keep their relatives, and I'm gonna say it like it is, keep certain friends all on the payroll. Accidentally, the city has created sort of an anarchistic uh, culture in the city where many entrepreneurs, especially the smaller retailers and restaurateurs, uh, simply forego getting the required permits that the city is demanding of them because it's too expensive and because it often takes too long and sometimes the inspections that are done are of low quality. So entrepreneurs have said, well look, let them catch me if they can. Right now, the city has decided we're going to try to catch you and we're going to put together a special unit to do so. For people who would want to start a business today in the city of Detroit, I really don't know how they would go about even starting because the amount of hurdles that the city has set up to prevent them from going into business is just overwhelming. Steve Thomas owns Detroit Athletic Company and has been doing business in the city since age 11 when he started selling peanuts and hats outside of Tiger Stadium. Even then, dealing with the city government was not easy. They would look for violations. So it might be the fire department and they would come and they would say, hey, you're set up too close to the fire hydrant. They would claim that there was some rule we were in violation of. They would suggest to us that maybe we should give them a hat or give them something in return. And then that was kind of how it would get glossed over. So you just learn to comply. I think it's really a shameful thing that, that people who are entrusted with power would, would become that corrupt where they you know, would even shake down a little kid. Representatives from the city of Detroit declined multiple requests to be interviewed for this video. But the government website says that, we are sending a message that if you're doing business in the city, you need to follow the law. Imagine that, in light of a bankruptcy where businesses and people have fled the city in droves, they're shutting down businesses that have succeeded. They may not have the requisite permits that the city wants, but that hasn't stopped patrons from patronizing them and sharing their resources in exchange for whatever service the business is providing. That cries out for a different model. Once I pay for the compliance certificate, then I have to go to all these different electrical this, that, set up appointments. This person might say, I'm okay. The next one said, well, he shouldn't have okayed you. I look at the bill I have to pay and sometimes I just really, and I have said it to them, why don't I just come to you because it seems like what you want is money and just give you one check. Luckily, I could afford it. But what about the person who just starting out and the reputation that they give their cousins or relatives or friends, 
who might think about doing it and they say, hey, don't, they rob you.